But first, former CIA person John Stockwell gives us some history on the country. Guatemala, 1954. This is a cutie where the CIA overthrew Jacobo Arbenz. Arbenz was trying to buy unused land from United Fruit Company. Now, mind you, United Fruit Company owned Guatemala. Its government, its, its budget, annual budget, was larger than the government's. Arbenz wanted to buy the unused acres that United Fruit was holding and turned it over to the peasants, and they would grow bananas and sell them to United Fruit. So it wasn't really even hostile to United Fruit. Moreover, he was proposing to pay $2.98 an acre, which would represent 100% profit on their investment in the land, seemingly reasonable. The State Department stepped in and demanded that he pay $75 an acre, which was neither reasonable nor could the government afford to pay it. He couldn't do it, wouldn't do it, and proposed to proceed, so they castigated him as a communist, and the CIA organized a plot, and they ousted him. They took Colonel Armaz, who was a political nobody, and put him in power. And this is what our detractors would call a puppet of the United States. And he signed a sweetheart deal with United Fruit, and everybody was happy. Now, history and some research by a couple of New York Times uh, journalists gives us an interesting little insight into this covert action. One, the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Henry Cabot Lodge, had personal stock holdings in United Fruit Company. The Assistant Secretary of State, John Lodge, had personal stock holdings in United Fruit Company. The Secretary of State, John Foster Dulles, his law firm, uh, did legal work for, I believe it's the Schlafly Bank, which held the papers on the Guatemalan Railroad, which was owned by the United Fruit Company. And the CIA director, Alan Dulles, was his brother, also was a member of the same law firm with this indirect financial interest in United Fruit Company. Our Benz was not a communist, and there was not a single communist in his cabinet. But they organized a coup and threw him out so that they could uh, make some money on their investments. At that time, Richard Nixon was Vice President of the United States and said after the overthrow, this is the first instance in history where a communist government has been replaced by a free one. The whole world is watching to see who does the better job. Well, that was 30 years ago. Since then, the record is clear in Guatemala. It didn't work. The next three leaders of Guatemala died violent deaths. Amnesty International tells us that 85,000 people have been killed by subsequent governments in Guatemala uh, that are supported by the United States. This is not making friends for the United States in the long haul, I assure you. And United Fruit Company went bankrupt. The president jumped through a window of the Pan Am building and killed himself. According to Alexander Coburn in In These Times, the intervention by the CIA over th 30 years ago has developed into a regime whose oppression is unequaled anywhere in the hemisphere. El Salvador, Chile, Argentina, Uruguay, they've all had their whores, but there's nothing that can compare with the suffering that the Guatemalan people have undergone in the last three decades. 